Everybody, thanks for watching. Vic McCarty here in Interlochen, talking to, well, someone who happens to be uh, noteworthy and also my friend at the same time, which is a little odd. Clark Harner joins us. Clark, thanks for taking the time. Absolutely. All right, you are, for lack of a better term, a drummer, correct? Uh, that's probably the best term. All right, you are a drummer in a rock and roll band, or uh, what kind of band are you a drummer in? Well, I'm a drummer in a country slash classic rock band and also a swing band and then sometimes a celtic fusion band and the grand traverse pipes and drums okay well yeah we're going to get to grand traverse pipes and drums here in a second and also what that led to how long have you been playing the drums uh since i was three years old so 44 years now wowzers all right now you mentioned the grand traverse pipes and drums band you've been doing that for quite some time yeah, I, I joined them in 2008. Okay, so explain what that is. Uh, pipes and drums, it's a bagpipe band. Uh, normally they're called a pipe band, and they kind of leave the drums off because the drums are once in a while an afterthought. Uh, <laughs> that has to do with uh, with bagpipers. They, right. You know, Wait, well, uh, hold on a second. <laughs> the bagpipers kind of blow off the drums? A little bit. They, okay. they, they can do that, All but right. uh, the, the bands can't compete without a drum corps, so we are a necessary element. Or evil. Some might okay. say that, yeah. <laughs> okay, now, how big is this uh, this group of people? Uh, the Grand Travers Band, uh, uh, we've had up to 15 members, yeah. 15 to 20 performing members in a competition. Um, right now, this year, going into competition, we're a little bit smaller than that. I think we're going in with nine, eight or nine pipes and a drum corps of eight people. So, yeah, it's still pretty significant. So people. now, who do you compete against and where do you have to go? There are actually uh, competitions all over the United States, Canada, um, as far away as uh, Australia, New Zealand. The, the biggest ones being in, in Europe, uh, England, Ireland and the World Championships in Glasgow, Scotland. We don't travel to Glasgow, Scotland, right. um, but there are bands from North America that do. We, we uh, being a smaller band, we will compete in uh, local, I say local, uh, the Alma Highland Games. Last year we competed in Ohio. Uh, this year we're also competing in the Chicago Highland Festival. Now, how big is this type of music i mean this type of competition how, how widespread is this it's huge it's all over the world uh there's competitions like i said as far as, far away as australia new zealand south africa um glasgow scotland being the biggest mm -hmm. one um the several championships the north american championship happens in maxville ontario uh they just held the british championship in in england i can't remember the name of the town but mm -hmm. uh, they had that they do i think they have an irish championship uh, European Championship, um, and so those are the major ones. And it used to be—I'm not sure how it works this year—but if you win a major, you're automatically into the worlds. Uh, but the last few years, they've done qualifiers, so you get to the worlds and you have to play a qualifier round, and then you get to go into the final uh, competition circle. Okay, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you are an American drummer. And pipes and drums, it's a little bit different, correct? Uh, yes. There's What I grew up learning was the North American rudimental style of drumming. Uh, so that's a very open style. You see that in a lot of marching bands, you know, collegiate marching bands, mm -hmm. high school marching bands, uh, DCI, which is Drum Corps International. That's all open style American drumming. I grew up playing that kind of drumming um, played in a Fife and Drum Corps, which was a historical um, reenactment, I say reenactment unit. Right. It was actually a living history unit, um, considered to be one of the finest examples of, of an 18th century style Fife and Drum Corps in existence today. With that, it wasn't competitive, but we traveled all over uh, places like in Canada. We, we played in castles in, in England, uh, played for the Chelsea Army Pensioners Home in, in, in England. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's quite a quite a quite a big deal, and that's where I really learned a, a, the open how to integrate the open style of playing. And that all led to you writing a book. It did. It did. Um, 
the drummers that were coming into the Grand Traverse Corps all had the American style background, as well as I did. So when I got into the piping and drumming, there was no resource that I could find that told me how to take what I knew and play the Scottish style, and which is a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, it's a little tighter, uh, a little more articulate. There's, some of the rudiments are the same, but they're, they're the same but different. The grip is a little bit different. So all these different elements that I had no idea how to, how to do, um, it wasn't written down in any way that I could find. And now it's in a book. Give us the name of the book quickly. The book is called The Kilted Drummer. And where can people find it? People can find it online at cphdrums.com. Excellent. Clark, thanks for the time. Absolutely. Thank you. Talking about drums and drumming and Scottish drumming and books. I'm Vic McCarty in Interlochen for My News 26.